Hello, welcome back to Quantum Computation Simplified Part 7. So in this video, we will learn about Grover's algorithm. What it is, what are the steps involved, what is its use, how it can be implemented in a quantum computer along with an example. So let's start with what is Grover's algorithm. So it's an algorithm proposed by a computer scientist, uh, Mr. Grover. And he proposed it to solve the problem of an unstructured database search. So mathematically, it's an algorithm, quantum algorithm, for finding out an input value called x star in a given set of values of x. So this is building a function which will give 1 for f of x star and for all other values of uh, x, it should give 0. To comprehend it further, let's take an example like this. So you are given a telephone directory. Unfortunately, this is not an ordinary telephone directory. Here the names are not uh, arranged in an alphabetical uh, manner, which means like an unstructured or unorganized. Okay. So, but uh, you are supposed to find out the phone number of a particular person. So what you will do? You will keep searching the name, right? So if you are lucky, you will be able to get it quickly with a few searches. But if you are lucky as bird, you have to go till the end, which means you have to do n search. In fact, uh, n minus 1 search you will do it to get the right answer. And if you do some random search, on an average, you may be able to do it by n by 2 search. So with Grover's algorithm, you will be able to get the answer in square root of n uh, steps. Will it be advantageous? Yes, it will be. I mean, just to understand that advantage, uh, let's assume that there are uh, 1 million uh, entries in the database. And you will be able to get the square root of 1 million, which is 1000, right? So with 1000 steps, you will be able to confidently get the right uh, data what you are looking for. Another simple example is to find out where is the card, I mean the preferred card, I mean or somebody to mark a card, a card in a deck of uh, 52 cards. So, like this, we, I mean, uh, people, uh, people are working on different applications of uh, Grover algorithm because there is a huge time benefit. Uh, definitely, uh, if you can find, it, find out an application, it will be advantageous. So before going on to the details, uh, we need to have some certain prerequisite to understand this video. So if you do not have, please uh, go through my previous videos, part 1 to 5, to get some basic knowledge. Uh, you, alternatively, you can also look at other videos or going through some textbooks. Then only it will be easy to understand uh, this video. Uh, it's good if you have some knowledge about algorithm complexity, but if you don't have, it's fine. You still, uh, you'll be able to understand this video. So what are the steps uh, involved? First, we need to represent all the n input states, right? So that can be done by having small n uh, number of qubits. So what is small n? Small n 2 to the power of n equal to capital N. So with this, we'll be able to represent with the help of superposition and with the help of Hadamard gates, we'll be able to represent all n input states. Okay. The next step is to get an oracle. We have seen what is oracle is just like a block box having some functions in it, some operations uh, inside that. So what is that uh, function uh, does is if it finds the interested state, we have set of uh, input states. Whenever it finds the interested one, it will return one. Or alternatively, we can say it will add a face to that uh, state. For all other uh, states of x, which is not equal to, uh, which are not equal to omega, it will uh, return retain the state as it is or the f of x is uh, retaining 0. So this can be represented in a circuit form like this. So we have a set of x which represents uh, superposition of all states 
and then there is an, an ancilla bit when they are uh, passed through uh, this varicel uh, you will get the state uh, the uh, superposition state as it is uh, and the ancilla bit will get uh, xr with the f of x so this is what we intend to do it but uh, we will end up in getting like this uh, this also we have seen it in one of our uh, videos earlier that is i'll give you the i mean i will pass the set of all input states and we'll use uh, negative uh, state as the ancilla bit so what is circuit negative is nothing but uh, state one with uh, hadamard gate okay so at that time what happens is this negative state uh, comes out undisturbed while uh, the uh, state x will get some phase information so how that is getting added is minus 1 to the power of f of x okay so whenever uh, the i mean um, state which you are interested you will see some phase information getting added right minus 1 to the power of uh, 1 otherwise f of x is zero which means nothing uh, happens so the, st the state of x remains as it is so with this we'll be able to capture the one what we are interested in but unfortunately you we know that in uh, quantum computers uh, for every measurement there is a probability associated with that so since the probability is same like any other state though we are able to mark it we cannot uh, confidently say that this is what i was uh, interested in so what you have to do is you have to increase the amplitude of uh, the one what we are interested which will result in higher probability so that we will get what we want to get and that can be done with some additional exercise that's what uh, grover has given so some experts have put the grover's algorithm in a geometrical way so let's try to see if you don't understand also it's fine uh, but otherwise uh, you, we will uh, try to understand this in a better way so what we are given is a set of uh, inputs so that is represented by this state and what we are interested is in this state omega state okay and what is this new state we have seen is this is nothing but this state without omega so that they will become orthogonal okay this is the initial problem we have defined that all the possible states are all represented and we are going to get this guy out so in another way all the states are represented and their amplitudes are given and we are interested in this uh, state and the magnitude of all the states are equal they are all 1 by uh, square root of n and the average of all is also same as 1 by square root of n now we have to apply the oracle so when oracle is applied what has, what happens is this gets reflected like this so this gets s state s gets reflected with respect to s dash as u omega s got it in this picture what happens is all the states will remain as it is it's only the state which you are interested will get a negative phase you can see here so we are able to mark it but we have seen it in the previous slide that it is of no use if you stop at this point because we cannot take it out so what you have to do is some more operations right so what are these operations we will see in the next slide but before that i just uh, want you to note that earlier the average was 1 by square root of uh, n now the average has come down because of uh, this guy has become negative earlier that was positive so they are all having uniform so the average was 1 by square root of n now it is slightly less than 1 by square root of n so what grover suggests is you now make a flip with respect to the new average line so that they will all go all will go to one di direction and that and uh, the important point is the amplitude of this will go up maybe in the next slide we will see so here what uh, he says is you apply the uh, grover diffusion operator 
which uh, makes a reflection with respect to this. So it will go somewhere here like that, from here to here. So we'll see it in the next slide. So it has moved after applying US, so UW has gone to this place. So uh, and then uh, here what happens, we have seen all will go to one direction. And the, but the important thing you have to remember is the magnitude of uh, all other states will come down to some level, I mean the amplitude, whereas uh, this one has gone up. So we are able to make some differentiation in terms of amplitude also. Whether that is sufficient or not, it depends on the problem what we are working. But uh, if it is not sufficient, what you have to do is, you have to repeat this operation again and again. So both US and U omega, you do it again and again, so that this guy will go towards uh, omega state, so that's good. And this guy, the amplitude will keep growing to 1 and all other guys will go towards 0. So with this, we will be able to easily take this omega out. So how many times you have to do? Roughly you have to do square root of n times. So with that, approximately you will get a probability of 1. Looks very simple, right? So how do we implement? So let's try to summarize how we are going to implement it. So we'll start with n, uh, small n number of qubits. So what is small n? Uh, is equal to 2 to the power of small n equal to capital N to represent all capital N states. So initialize the system to uniform superposition uh, by applying n Hadamard gates to the n number of qubits. So you will get a combined state of uh, S. Okay. Then use Ansela bit in state 1 and apply Hadamard gate uh, minus, sorry, and apply Hadamard gate to get uh, minus 1 uh, state, sorry, minus state. With this, we have to apply an oracle. So this is a very critical thing. You have to design an oracle such that it will mark the interested state alone, not all other states. And suppose you are interested in two states, you can build an oracle like that. In fact, uh, one of the examples what is given uh, by uh, IBM QuizKit, they mark two states uh, with one oracle. Yeah, you can have a look at that. So like that you can build. Suppose you want to mark, I mean, uh, uh, m states, then the total iteration, if you do m by square root of m, that should be sufficient. So after marking it, you have to increase the amplitude. That is done by Grover diffusion operator and Grover diffusion operator itself has got three steps in it. First is applying Hadamard gate, then applying conditional phase shift operation uh, and that is represented by this expression followed by another uh, set of Hadamard gates. So these three operations can be combined to represent like this. Why? Because uh, applying Hadamard gates uh, uh, n times over uh, ket uh, 0 is nothing but uh, this expression which is uh, defined as ket s. So that is why we are replacing ket 0 with ket s. And our uh, aim is to find whether will this uh, really uh, do the mark, I mean uh, phase shift only for those uh, states which are non-zero. Maybe we can uh, do a quick check, okay. So we'll start with the expression to uh, ket 0 bra 0 minus i applied to state 0. So we uh, ket 0 we know it's a column vector upon 0. This is a row vector upon 0 minus identity. So when I multiply these three uh, elements, I'll get uh, a matrix 2, 0, 0, 1. You can verify it. Minus identity matrix of uh, 2, 1, 0, 0, 1. So when I do the subtraction, I'll get 1, 0, 0, minus 1. And uh, uh, this is uh, represented as 1, 0. So when I multiply this, I will get 1, 0, which is nothing but uh, state 0, undisturbed, right? It's not at all, uh, I mean, there's no face information. You can do it as a homework uh, by instead of 0, you apply it on uh, state 1, you will see a negative uh, sign coming out. And you have to repeat uh, these two steps, uh, square root of n times uh, maximum to get the required amplitude uh, uh, which will uh, improve the probability and finally you make the measurement to know the value right and uh, this is again uh, represented in uh, uh, circuit uh, what i have taken this picture uh, from uh, in uh, wikipedia 
So we'll start with uh, n number of uh, qubits in state 0, apply Hadamard, take uh, Ansela bit, not necessarily that you have to always use Ansela bit, it depends on the uh, problem, size of the problem maybe. So and then uh, apply Hadamard, then apply the Oracle, afterwards apply a uh, Grover's diffusion operator and then uh, you may be repeating uh, these two operations um, square root of uh, n times and finally you make a measurement to get the answer clear even if you have a little bit of doubt uh, with an example uh, you will be clear so in order to understand let's start with three qubits so with three qubits we can create eight states correct so or we can represent the number uh, 0 to 7 eight different numbers and uh, we will try to mark and then try to take uh, the number 6, decimal number 6 or binary number 110 out. So for which we are building an oracle which will mark only 110. So will it do that job? We will do a quick check whether this can mark, we, it has to mark only 110, it should not uh, touch all other uh, states. So we will go to this uh, website which I already I given it as a reference. This is another one like IBM quiz kit. And uh, you, it's better you try this also. So let's quickly build the circuit. Uh, we need to get three qubits. Two are there. You will get third one. And we need to apply Hadamard gate. So when I go there, automatically the third qubit is uh, uh, given to us. Now we have created the superposition of all eight states. You can see here, right? Uh, as we move, uh, the amplitude zero, decimal one, decimal three, decimal five, uh, like that, up to decimal seven. And we are interested in decimal six. One thing you have to notice now: phase is zero. The phase is zero for all uh, the states. Now we need to. We are going to add phase to only states uh, decimal six. Okay, and we should not add any phase to other uh, states. So let's add. We are building the oracle. Oracle is built with a controlled profiling and a couple of not and Hadamard gates. So we'll see whether we are able to mark uh, state six. Straight away go. Yes, we have done it right. Phase earlier it was 0, now it is 180. You can see here all other states, the phase remains the same. So, this oracle will work for us. So, we'll go back. Now, we have to apply Grover diffusion operator. So, that has been given like this a set of uh, Hadamard, set of X, Hadamard, controlled not. Uh, had a mark set of x set of had i mean it's uh, like a mirror image of what we are giving or uh, doing it on the left side so the total one we will try to do it in quiz kit itself so already i uh, made it to save time so we will go and see it on the ibm site so you know very well that uh, this is nothing but a set of uh, statements for importing library and function and we have to write uh, run by clicking control and the end. So yes, it has accepted, acknowledge. Now uh, then we will have to initialize applying uh, Hadamard to all the uh, input uh, 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 qubits to get the superposition of all states, right? So this is a function. Let's run it. Then this is the uh, oracle uh, piece of it. So we had seen right x h control not x h. So let's create that. This is what uh, we have seen it earlier, right? We saw uh, we ran also and checked this is working. And this is the diffusion uh, diffuser uh, function. So I have just taken as it is from IBM uh, quiz kit site. So it's nicely written and it works for any number of qubits so we are going to use it for three qubits by giving uh, the input three while calling the function and this uh, as we have seen it has got set of uh, Hadamard, not 
one had a more uh, controlled knot uh, uh, one had a more then set of uh, x set of uh, had a mod okay so finally we have to uh, bind together all so start with the circuit uh, add uh, the had a mod initialization to get the superpositions then append it with an oracle diffuser uh, measure it and then get yes the circuit is ready it looks very simple and neat okay so we'll run it in a simulator yeah good so you are able to mark and then uh, get a good probability so in this with one iteration itself we are able to get it so we don't have to do again but if you want to increase further you can do one more iteration so as i told you earlier it depends on, on the type of problems what you are working to do but maximum you may be doing a square root of n iterations so i'll try to run it on a simulator since it's a very simple problem let me let us try but it's taking time we will go to the slide so first we have to see which is the least uh, busy and then uh, we have to load to that uh, simulator so job is being validated oh luckily uh, the queue size is very less otherwise if you do this exercise uh, the day us day time you have to wait for a long time so hopefully yeah it's running i hope within a minute we will be able to get the answer have little patience actually we are lucky yeah so you you see here uh, uh, though the probability is less but still uh, this is way ahead of uh, all other states right as we uh, mentioned earlier if you want to increase the probability you run uh, us and u omega again so that will help uh, us to get uh, better probability so uh, very good that we are able to mark one particular thing in an unorganized uh, or uh, unstructured database so we'll go back to our presentation so the job is done so before concluding i you can have additional references uh, as i told you earlier also the basirani is uh, video a uh, very good actually you can have a look at that then there is another video recently i came across from uh, professor uh, uh, dosh so he has also given a nice lecture i mean they give it in a different way i i, I request you to see both and uh, I, i try to simplify as much as possible and uh, give it in this video but uh, if you know more and more terminologies of uh, uh, quantum computing you will love them actually and there's a nice wikipedia page which also uh, gives uh, nice information and the code as i told you it's available in ibm quizkit or uh, github from google and then uh, there's another website uh, they have given and for textbook this is the ultimate uh, textbook by uh, mike and nishak and the original grover paper uh, you can uh, see it here and with this i'll conclude and what you can do next is so you start getting into the depth because all these videos we have seen at a very very peripheral level and um, because my aim was to see create some interest so that i think now you got roughly an idea like what exactly we are doing uh, in quantum computing now we can uh, try to understand some more terminologies also you can develop your own new algorithms uh, and then find applications for whatever algorithms what we have seen so in the meantime i will try continue to learn and come out with videos which will be useful for your learning and then i'll i'll also try to increase the depth now uh, and then uh, maybe uh, we have to see why the probability uh, of i mean the required answer is less is there anything uh, we can do so such uh, area also i will try to bring out a video so till that time uh, bye thanks for uh, watching uh, this video